Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to be finishing up a section of our unit that deals with sound, specifically harmonics, and that's in the bigger category of our unit on vibrations and waves. And this is actually a cool topic where physics, math, and music all kind of meet together. So it's actually a really cool topic. Primarily today we're going to be talking about objects or instruments that are open only at one end or at both ends. So we're talking primarily about like instruments that would be open at one end like this trombone right here or at both ends we could talk about a flute for instance. All right so let's get to it. Okay so we are going to visualize what's happening here with the waves and I'm going to use a transverse wave because it's easier to spot what's going on than a longitudinal wave but in this case it would actually be a longitudinal or a compressional wave because we're talking about air we're talking about compressions of air. I can put a link to some videos that will help you to visualize this, but trust me when I say it's easier to learn it with these concepts in this way, and then to move on to the visual of like what's really happening with compressional waves. That's harder to deal with. So we are going to visualize the nodes and anti-nodes. So N for node and AN for anti-nodes. And it turns out that if you have an instrument or a tube that's open on two ends, like a flute, then you're going to have an anti-node at both of those openings. That air is free to move and expand, and that's how it will build up a standing wave every time. And so this is the way the fundamental frequency or first harmonic would look. And just like before, we're going to use an L value here, and we're going to think of it as instead of the length of the string, we're going to talk about the length of the vibrating air column over here. And then we're going to make an equation based on L in terms of its equivalency to the number of wavelengths that we have. And so this is a little tough to start with, but I want you to think about how many wavelengths do you think there are in here? If you just look at the blue or look at the red, what would this be in terms of a fraction of a wavelength, for instance? Well, it's a little hard to see, but if you imagine we doubled this length right here, it would go down and then back up and it would have completed the cycle at that point if we doubled the length. So that's a clue that one length, in this case, is going to be equal to one half of a wavelength. So you'll get better at spotting that with practice. If that's tough for you, just think about that, or let's look at our next example, which is easier. By the way, that's going to be our fundamental frequency, or also called our first harmonic. And secondly, if we take a look at the next time you would have a standing wave, the next higher frequency wave that is possible to have a standing wave. It's important to notice that you have anti-nodes on both openings here, and that's basically a requirement, you could say. And so if you think about this, let's think about what this would be, this red in terms of a wavelength, or the blue in terms of a wavelength, and then we would translate that into an equation over here. L is equal to something. What do you think that L is gonna be equal to over here? Well, it's going to be equal to one wavelength, you could say. All right, and if we were going to look at this for the third harmonic, it would look something like this. Again, we have the requirements of anti-nodes on the open ends of the instrument, or just the open pipe, you could say. And I want you to think about how many waves do we have here for either the red or the blue as your visual guide. What do you think? L is equal to what over here? So if we start down here at the trough at the bottom, we go up and down, that would be one full cycle. And then up here again, that would be halfway through one more cycle. So that would be one and a half wavelengths. So we could say L is equal to three over two wavelengths. Now, another way to reason through that is just to say, well, if I know that this is one half of a wavelength, how many of these things do I have? Well, I've got one, two, three, and each of these are equal to one half of a wavelength, so I've got three halves of a wavelength. And so if that works for you, go ahead and use that strategy. And we'll talk about the equation in a little bit, but first I want to talk about instruments that are open only on one end and closed on the other. So if you think about a trumpet, for instance, or the trombone that we talked about earlier, you could think about, well, what would the fundamental frequency look like? Well, first of all, the drawing is going to be different, right? Because we have a closed end over here. And if we have a closed end, then that would form a node over here. We have an open end on the other end over here. That would be like the opening of the trumpet over here. And that would be an anti-node. So this is where you're going to get your first standing wave. This is the lowest frequency that you can have your first standing wave with. And my question is, can you figure out what the equation is going to be that relates the length to the wavelength? What do you think it is? All right, this one's a bit tougher. If you have trouble with this, one way to handle it is to say, well, I can't really visualize what this is. 
but I know that that is equal to L, right? This length is equal to L here. Well, what if I doubled it? What would happen? Well, if I doubled it, it would go over and down, but that would not be a full cycle because it would go over and down, but it would be moving down at that point, not back up. So we would have to go through another full half cycle. So this is not a complete half cycle, but if we doubled it, it would be a half cycle. Or another way of just saying that is just to say, well, its length is one fourth of a wavelength. So this is one quarter of a wavelength. If you have trouble with that, I think you should stop the video right now and draw a transverse wave and divide it up into four points and try to visualize what's happening here. These drawings aren't the greatest because I was trying to do them with my computer and not violate copyright laws by stealing prettier ones. All right, let's take a look at our second drawing over here. This is the second time we're going to have a standing wave set up, so that's our second harmonic. And check this out. Again, we still have the requirement of a node right here and an anti-node over here. That's true. Anytime you have an opening, you would have an anti-node. And anytime you have a closed part, you would have to have a node for a standing wave to form as a consequence of a forming standing wave. All right, so the question is, though, what is our L value in terms of our wavelength here? All right, well, we're not a complete wave, right? Like we get up and down that would be one half of a wavelength right and we get over here but we don't get back up over here you could say so we are about three quarters of the way there can you see that three quarters of the way there we are in fact exactly three quarters of the way there so we would say our length is equal to three fourths lambda or the wavelength all right and our third harmonic that we're going to take a look at is going to look like this again following the same principle of starting with the node on the closed end and an anti-node on the open end. What is our L value gonna be here equal to in terms of wavelength? Okay, and so let's take a look at this. So this would be one complete cycle plus one more quarter of a cycle, right? And so we would call that five fourths. So we would say this L value, this length, is equal to five fourths wavelengths, and that's how you reason through it. All right, next up, I do want to introduce the equations for this. The very first equation is exactly the same as the previous equation that you saw. So the equation for harmonics for a string fixed at both ends, that's going to be exactly the same equation for a pipe open at both ends, like a flute, for instance. So they have exactly the same equation. That makes things easy, right? And the one that is tougher is going to be the one that is closed at one end. All right, there are two differences here. So one of them, we have to substitute a four instead of a two here. And another is we have to substitute odd numbers here for the harmonic. So this would be the first harmonic, the second harmonic, and the third harmonic. All right, and so let's try an example problem. So it says calculate the first three harmonics from a 2.22 meter long pipe that is open at both ends. So something like a flute, but longer. Assume the speed of the sound in the air is given. We're going to do an A part and a B part. So what would go into this N value for the fundamental frequency? Well, that's going to be 1, right? And then you plug in the rest of the numbers, and you end up with a fundamental frequency of 77.3 hertz. Well, how would we do this problem then if we changed it and said, all right, we want the second harmonic. What's that going to be? Well, we're going to do something very similar. We're just going to plug in a different harmonic number, a different number 2 here and we ended up with 155 hertz. How about for the third harmonic? What do you think we're going to do? That's right, pretty much exactly the same thing while changing the end value. And so we go ahead and do that, and we ended up with 232 hertz. All right, and so let's take a look at the second part of this. So now we're talking about an object that's open on one end, like a trumpet. And so this has the modified equation. We do have to also remember the only logical possibilities we have for n values are odd numbers. So if the problem asks for the first three harmonics for this, what we're going to do is the very first one is straightforward. We just put in a 1. We do have to change this 2 over here to a 4, but we end up with our answer here, 38.6 hertz. Now my question is, what do we do next? This is where a lot of students will get this wrong, I think. But remember I said the only logical options for n values are going to be odd numbers. The physics works out that way. So what do you think I'm going to put in here? All right, well, I need to put in the next odd number then and do the math, and we end up with 116 hertz. And for the last one, what do you think I'm going to type in? We're going to type in a 5 for n, and as a result, we'll end up with a third harmonic of 193 hertz for something like a trumpet that's open on one end. All right, and there you have it. 
but I will be talking about more concepts in our waves unit for sure. So hopefully this has been helpful. Please stick around for my next video, and I hope you have a great day. Take care.